Mexican mask guys. I know, been a long time. I've actually been busy. I've been enjoying myself. I've been doing all sorts of things. Uh, those of you that follow me reasonably closely, I've got a, another workshop a couple of sheds away and I've designated that as the wood turning shop. And after 30 plus years of loathing, detesting and not wanting to do wood turning, I'm finally hooked. I'm absolutely in love with it so I can stream from up there and that'll happen a little later on. This is just a very, very quick one to get my hand back in because I haven't been streaming for a while, I haven't been doing videos. Um, so I thought I'd just do a quick one and share some of my thoughts on book matching. For those of you who don't know, book matching is when you get a piece of timber, such as this piece, and you cut it down the middle, and when you open it up, you get a copy of both sides. So it's book match, it's like a book. What this side looks like, that side looks like. Here's a, here's a better one here, actually, that'll give you. G'day, James, how are you? And around and around we go, wood turn, yeah. <laughs> how to turn good wood into rubbish. No, not really. Alchemist, thank you, how you going? All right, here's another bit. So rip that up the middle, and you can see that pattern. It's like looking in the mirror. Now that's what they call book matching. And a lot of people absolutely love it. I used to love it too. Veneering, you see it a lot in, uh, book match doors. Uh, I've seen panels in cabinets, uh, solid panels in cabinets, book matched. And it's all very lovely, but there are some drawbacks. So what I wanted to do today was just um, talk to you about why it's not maybe the best option and offer some alternatives for book matching in solid. There are still some drawbacks with book matching in veneer, but they aren't as great as book matching in solid. And I'll explain why. All right, when you um, machine, you machine, uh, it doesn't matter if you're using a, a joint, a thickness, a hand plane, whatever, you always go uphill, no, downhill, sorry, hang on. <laughs> I've lost the plot, which well, but now you go uphill. Okay, so you grain, oh, let me see if I can find a bit. Here we go, there you go. So, if your timber has the grain running like this, and you were going to machine this part here, you would go that way. The reason being you're going uphill. And what you're doing is actually knocking the grain off whilst it's being supported by the grain behind it. So when I cut this bit off, it's being supported by this bit of grain. Now if you go the other way, if you were to do this side and plane this way, you're actually going against the grain, so you're pulling this piece of grain away from this piece. And that's when you get tear out, when you get um, you know, rips in your timber. Not all timber does it, but 99.9% .9 of timber does it. And it looks unsightly, and if you're working to a precise thickness of your work and you get tear out, there's not much you can do. You can bog it with um, dust and glue. I don't like doing that. You can wax it, you can accentuate it, you can put uh, resin in it. Now I've started working with resin now, that's exciting. You can put a wood filler in it, but it's still better, instead of having to fix it, not having the problem in the very first place. Excuse me. So what happens with book matching is, I'll get a piece here. See if I'm fine. This is very, this um, timber I'm using here is called coachwood. Very, very fine grain in it, as you will see on this close up here. Very, very fine grain, but lovely, gorgeous to work with. Okay, now if you look at that, we'll use this piece as an example. If you look at this, 
The grain on this piece here is actually running that way. It's starting here and if I follow that piece of grain up, it goes to here. So I would plane in that direction. Now what happens when you cut it, whoops. Now what happens when you cut it, all of a sudden we're planing uphill. Now we've reversed the grain. The grain is now running this way. So it means we have to plane this board that way. However, if you look at this piece, and I'll turn it around, it is still running this way, or if you prefer, that way. So this one I've got the plane this way to be uphill with the grain, but this one I've got to plane that way. Now where the problem comes in, as if you hadn't already worked it out, if you bookmatch something like that, let's do it on this one, if you bookmatch something like that, you'll notice those arrows are going against each other. So effectively, what happens if you put that into a jointer, once you've got your, your board or the top or whatever it is together, and you put it through a planer or a joint, uh, not a joint, well, a planer or a jointer, a thicknesser, you're going to be going with the grain on one board and against the grain on the other. So you're going to get tear out on one side. The other thing is chatoyance, which again is related to the grain. If I look up, I don't know if you can actually see it, I'll try it. If you look up with the light on this board, this one appears a bit darker. If I turn it around this way, it'll be the same colour as that. And get up there. There you go. That's the same colour. And I do that, it's the same colour all the way up the piece of timber. Yet if I turn this around and we have book matched, you'll notice, hopefully this will work on this one, as we go up, this one here, it doesn't show up so well in the camera, but this one here is actually darker. You can see it just there, just slight shade darker than this one. And the reason for that, again, comes back to the grain. Because the light is hitting the grain this way and glancing off and giving you a beautiful sheen and a nice reflection. This one, this, the light source is going into the end grain of the grain and therefore is dulling it and you get a matte finish. If you have a look at any anything that's been veneered, particularly, and it's book matched, you put a light to it and you'll find one, one part will flash and one part will be dull. And then you change the light source, 180 degrees, and it'll swap. All of a sudden, one, that side that was dull will now be bright and the side that was bright is now dull. And that again is down to the grain. So that's the main reasons I don't like book matching. Look, book matching looks lovely, it really does. If you're in a room with an even light source, you won't notice it. But most places, especially if you're making a table or a bench top or something like that, or a cabinet, it is near a window and you get light or you've got uh, lights in the room and it just, I don't know, takes away from the effect. Very pretty, very pretty, but aesthetically not right. Not when you look at the uh, light that's coming off it. So, what to do? I'll move some of this so you can see what I'm doing. What, um, what I'm making here, along with the bed, I still have the bed, uh, I just got a, a really quick, brief suggestion, let's say, that it would be lovely in the kitchen if we had a mobile island or workbench where the lovely lady herself can put all her bench tools, like, um, what do you call those things? Liquidizers, food processors, uh, Kenwood chefs, um, neutral bullets, and all these other whiz bang things that turn food into mush. And so I thought, okay, well, I've got some beautiful coachwood, which this is, 
and I'll make one. So there's going to be three levels. Haven't worked out if I'm going to turn the um, dividers or have solid in there. Be on casters and it'll fit into the end of the kitchen bench that at the moment has just got waste of space underneath it. So and then we can store all the uh, machinery on that. When she needs it, I'll live wire it. So when she needs it, she can pull it out, just plugs it in and all of a sudden that island is alive and everything's going to have power and work. So you can do the processing and then put it all underneath on the shelves and wheel it back and it's freed up bench space. Who's snuck in? G'day, cat. <laughs> Anyone send my dog? He ran off. No, Ken, I haven't. I haven't. But you can have my mongrel if you like. He's a pest, but I love him to bits. He's outside. It's very, very hot and he doesn't want to come in here. The idiot. I've got the air conditioner on and he doesn't realise it. The, there you go. But I'll tell you what, if I opened a bar of chocolate, he'd be in here like a flack. So, good day, Ken. Tom managed to score a big uh, 2,500, 300. Tiger Maple Bookshelf. To, oh, congratulations, Tom. 80 bucks. Bonus. Oh, no. Solid Tiger Maple. Oh, you lucky chap. So are you going to keep it as a bookcase or are you going to repurpose it? I want one of those bibs. One bib. This is an apron. Full on apron. Oh, speaking of bibs, I did. I made a bib today for me. For woodworking. I don't know. Wood turning. I don't know if there's any other people out there that wood turn. I'm not a wood turner, but I'm enjoying wood turning. There you go. And I am sick to death of those hard shavings going down the front of your shirt and between your, your vest and your, your body. And it's 40 degrees up here at the moment. And it's just, actually, in the shed. Now I've got the air conditioner. I was going to say it's only 28 degrees, but I've got the air conditioner on. Um, and it gets really hot and gnarly and you shake it all out and you squirt compressed air down there. But with the help of my darling wife today, I've designed, because I don't like them full on, Straight jackets of wood turners wear, you know, it looks like a, an unemployed dentist has dyed his uniform. Um, so all I wanted really was like a, a neck, like a skivvy neck, and then this part of an apron. So we've done that. The prototype's a bit rough, but it works. So I'm going to make another one, and I'll show you that later on. Nathan, good evening to you too. I'm talking... Ah, oh, dear Tom, I'm torn between using the shelf for tools in my shop or keeping it inside as well. Mate, I would pull it to bits and repurpose the timber and make something out of it and get some brownie points. Uh, <laughs> 50 years of carpenter. I know, I know your bibs. I know the bibs. Yes, they are nice. Let's stop stuff getting in there. Uh, Cotton kind of in bought it on the spot when I saw the grain. Oh, yeah. Well, why wouldn't you? For $80, you go to a timber yard and try and get that in straight rock maple. No way in the world. Let alone tiger stripe. Okay, so getting back to this, what I've done, I've actually gone through the boards. They've only got to be four wide, haven't they? Yeah. I've gone through the boards and selected a colour match. So the colour matches. Then I've got all the grain going the same way, so the chatoyance is going to be the same. And even though I've lost some absolutely beautiful, brilliant um, book matching effects, I'm going to have something that is just going to look right, I think, and look nice. So I've just got to, <laughs> I've got to rethink this. Oh, hang on, that's it. These two can come off. They've got to be 240. I think by the time I finish gluing up. These might be a tad thinner. Hey, I tell you, I said I was doing, um, <laughs> I love this, I said I was doing, what do you call it, resin work. Oh, if, you've, if any turners out there work with resin, it, it's fun, but doesn't it make a mess? I started out with um, polyester resin. It's like turning glass. Shards of the stuff fly off, but they reckon poxies ago, so that's the next thing. But anyway, there's polyester resin. You can make paperweights and, you know, people do all these wonderful things with vases and tables and bits and pieces. But I thought about making paperweights. And this is an offcut from, from um, a bowl that I turned. And where is it? I just reckon, don't you reckon that, that looks like E.T.? 
I re <laughs> that's stunning. So I'm going to cast that in resin and uh, sell it as a paperweight. Natural ET. There you go. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Oh, I've got another one here. I did one that looks like um, Stargate Atlantis, but th this one's quite pretty too. Where are we going? Yeah, I'm going to cast that in resin and then turn it, I think. I don't know what I'm going to turn it into. But no, good fun, good fun. All right, well, back to this. So that's sort of, g'day, Alan, I'm using coachwood. Do you want some coachwood? That, that's sort of, I got your message on Facey. And I thought, Alan's after some coachwood. It's lovely stuff. Uh, how's the bed? Mate, the bed is going well too. That's all being done up in the other shed at the moment. Um, so I can take you up there later on. At the moment I'm still cutting diamonds in it. It's got just over 5,000 diamonds to be cut in the rails and the tester up the top. I've done 3,500 of them. I've only got 1,500 to go. Good stuff. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to glue these, but I'm going to glue them in pairs instead of doing it all up as one go. There you go. All right. I got, I got it, Alan. I'll, um, I'm going to glue these up in pairs because when I finish machining them, if they're too short, I'm going to run a stringer of blackwood up the middle. I was going to do ebony, but I think blackwood will look nicer, even though ebony is very, very nice. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is put a sprung joint, sprung joint in. What I also did when I cut these lengths, I cut these shorter lengths. So these are all off of three meter long boards. So what I'm going to do is when this one's glued up and then there's got to be another panel this long glued up, cut them both at 45 degrees. And then when they are all done, this will match up. Whoop, there you go. Hey, there's a good one. Yeah, I can see the difference there. <laughs> this will match up with this. And so they're all going to be the same piece of wood and they've all been docked at the same place. So they actually fit on the end of one another. Should we go, which, 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 which way? Find it in a minute. So they're going to be a continuous piece. But first of all, I'm going to have to put a sprung joint in it. And for the uninitiated, a sprung joint <coughs> is a... Um... Now that's annoying. Hang on, just got to look at this for a tick. I don't know if that one's gone cut eyes on me. Or not. This is um, that rule I said about the chatoyants and everything. It's all very well providing you got grain the same way. This has got cranky grain in it. So it's actually going uphill here and then uphill here. So you just got to work with it. Now a sprung joint, these two pieces are going to be joined together like this. So I'm going to raise it in the middle and I'm going to plane these two surfaces together. So it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if they're not dead flat because I'm planing them together. If I'm a little bit off and they've got a slope, that slope will match when you put them together. And a sprung joint is basically, where's a pretzel? A joint <clears throat> that I start planing here and then about here I put pressure on it and then release the pressure so I get a bit of a dip in there. So when I join these together, there's extra pressure in the middle which puts low, preloads the end so it won't crack or split at a later stage. So there we go. Oh, I tell you what, anyone likes car movies? I went to go and said, what am I doing? I was, I, that was nearly fatal. I'm doing these two. Anyone likes car movies? I can highly recommend 
Ford versus Ferrari. I took myself off to the cinema yesterday. First time in 25 years I have gone to the cinema by myself. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was, it had me from the very, very start. Brilliant movie. Um, I don't know if it's one partners would like if they're not into cars. Very, very noisy because you've got these huge cars, Ferraris and, um, well, GT40s and uh, Bugattis. And everything just running around the track, carving it up, making so much noise. But, oh, it was absolutely terrific. So I can highly recommend it. Angry Architecture, how are you? I'll, I'll have a chat in a tick. I've just got to do these ones up and I'll, I'll be there. Your, your house is looking spectacular, Darren. I've been following it. Oh, dear. I'm not going to do all these tonight because I promised the boss I wouldn't be too long. Ah, oh. uh, didn't know this was live. <laughs> well, I don't know, I'm feeling quite dead. No, it's live, Ken. The best wood for Greenwood. No, I, I really don't know. Um, I have just switched over to, I use high glue primarily, but I, my um, glue of choice now for PVAs is uh, Loctite. Uh, it's locked tight. Ah, tight bond. Uh, this one I've been told, which is a tight bond original, doesn't have any creep in it, which is something that I'm very happy with. And I have got no problem with it at all. Uh, they do do one called an epoxy, I think. That might be all right for greenwood, because you want one that's not going to be susceptible to moisture, I'm guessing. Um... I don't know, I'd, I'd seriously look at Tide Bond, Ken, and see what you... Uh, yeah, and <laughs> streaming, way to go. Um, and see what they've got to offer, because I, I quite like their glues. Oh, dear. Oh. Here's this big hooky here. Oh, I don't know if this is set or not. We'll, we'll try it. This is the Lee Nielsen number eight. But the thing I like about it is... It's got the heft and it's got the width for this particular board. Now, those of you that know me know this is one of my party tricks and I love doing it and it always works. If you squirt water into the jaws of your vice, it holds your work very, very securely because I don't know if you just saw that, but I went to plane it and it slipped in the vice. So with a bit of water in there, it won't. Unless, of course, you've got an H&T Gordon aluminium vice, then there's no need to squirt water on it. In fact, what I've seen Terry do on his vice, he's got a bit of leather. I've got one on my one of the benches up in the, the front workshop, and um, I think I might do that to mine too. But Awesome, absolutely. And they've got an outlet now in America, which is fantastic to hear. Now, on your tether. All right, now. Oops, this isn't going to be comfortable, is it? Okay. Might get a bit of grease on that. Oh. The trick, if you're going to use um, wax, and you're going to glue the pieces together, which I'm going to do here. Do not put wax. No, hang on. <laughs> I did that wrong. Wait a minute. I'm all confabulated. Um, you don't put wax on the back, was what I meant to say. Because I've got a number eight, eight around here somewhere. Don't know where it is. I'm going to have to take that wax off. Because... It uh, will lay wax on the timber and your glue won't be as effective. I haven't been down in this shed for yonks. 
I just don't know where half my stuff is now. Bear with me. Oh, come on. We've got all this stuff up in the other shed. Oh. This might do. This might do. Let's take all that wax off. So I just put on there. This is Scotch Bright, so it won't hurt it. Okay, so rewind on that last piece and do not put wax on the back of the plane, put it on the front of the plane. The reason being, it would allow the plane to still glide, but the wax being laid on the timber will be taken off by the blade, and therefore it won't affect the, um, the gluing process. If I can get this one under. A smaller clamp there. Maybe. Maybe this one will work. Oh, so close. Good. This could do with a bit of a brighten up too. Okay, so what I want to do is take some out the middle here and then release it up here. So now I've got a little bit of a bow in the middle there. And it doesn't matter if, if you're not at right angles because when I put those together, they are going to match up. So I'll use some, as I said, tight bond original. Oh! So I must admit, I really, I like these bottles too. They, um, the lids on them. Just got to make sure they don't gum up on the top. Which we go? Where, 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 where? Looking at the wrong one. I should be looking at that one. There you go. And I'll just, I double glue. I think you get a much better coverage by gluing both pieces. This doesn't have much um, work time, so you've got to be pretty, pretty quick with it. But as I said, the major advantage for me using this stuff is no creep and that's one thing that I absolutely cannot stand in the glue because you do a beautiful job you take your time you make it so it's all nice and flat and smooth you polish it and then in a few months time you see all these glue lines popping up which really is disheartening okay Oh, must have me witty for breakfast, I think. Let's now glue that onto that. Oh, 
one in the middle. Work our way out. What I've done is machine them to nearly finished size, then I'll glue them up as I'm doing now and give them another machine and quite possibly, depending on how they turn out, I'll put them through a drum sander before using um, an orbital sander on it. Just make sure they're as close as you can get them, because if you're a meter, a uh, meter, if you're a millimeter out, on one side, that means you're a millimetre out on the other side, which means then you've got to take two millimetres off. Or if you prefer, if you're a sixteenth of an inch out one side, it means it's a sixteenth of an inch out the other side, which means you've got to take an eighth of an inch off. Okie dokie, that's one. Yeah. Ah, um, I never glue green wood, just mess it. Oh, there you go. Oh, I know people, that, well, actually people do. Um, if they're doing turning and it's got to be cracking it. Generally, actually, they use a, uh, a CA glue or super glue and then uh, put an accelerator on it. See all these things I'm learning. Isn't it good? Okay, now this one, we'll make sure that's going the right way. Here we go. Goes that way, so that means grain's going that way and that one, grain's going that one and that one. So if I join both of those together again, Grain's going to be going the same way. Also, when you're doing what I'm doing now and you're just uh, shooting the boards to glue them up, it's so much easier if you've got the grain going the same way on both of them. Yeah, but I've got a few here. Got a number one, but I don't use that one very often. I'll get it out only because I want to. Oh. There we go. Oh. Here you go, Ken. I used to use this until someone offered me an obscene amount of money for it. And then I realised, oh, it might be worth something. So I stopped using it. There you go. It's a little Stanley number one. And when you, when you put that against the Lee Nelson number, number eight, it can piggyback it, and the Lee Nelson wouldn't even feel it was there. What I use now, instead of that one, when I'm making boxes and what have you, is what I like to call the Lamborghini, but they don't make them anymore. Apparently there was too much problems with the um, nickel. It's a 
Veritex NX60. Gorgeous blocky, absolutely brilliant block play. Okay, let's just play in this one. I'll glue this one together and then I'll go up and see what if I'm getting fed tonight or not. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, uh, I haven't been here for a while either. Angry? No. Okay, I've tried the water trick, it works well for me. Oh, well, that's good. Truly, thanks, James. Uh, loving those planes, loving the shot. Tell me about those chisels behind you. What do you want to know about them, mate? They're custom made. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> They're a three piece chisel. It's a Harold and Saxon. Where are we? There you go. M2 steel. Um, desert rosewood handles, brass ferrule, and whoops. Oh. Where are we? Where are we? Let me get this one. So, handles come out, ferrules, or uh, the, well, the blade screws out of the ferrule, and when you want to put them together, just that's it, and she's not going to go anywhere. Beautiful, beautiful chisels. I would feel myself. Very lucky to have, oh, very clever friends around me. Ah, right, now, what am I doing? Um, Miles, it's 3.40 here, get, get up for work, what a great way to, oh, well, that's nice. Well, thanks, Miles. Hope you have a good day and a safe day. Ah, oh, any tips on joining up really thin boards? <coughs> Clamping them up seems to be a problem. No, not really. Well, it makes a couple of attempts. One ball keeps coming. Okay, uh, number one, do what? Hello, fatso. I thought he'd be. Do you know what? I haven't fed him. I haven't fed him. Oh, where are you going? I'm going to check out the market. Oh, yeah, you're going to say good day to Darren Angry Architectures on. Hey, the boss has come down to see if I'm working. And I am. Look, 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 I'm making your gizmo thing. There he see? Is. What? Oh, it is. And everyone's going to say, hello, Sue. Hi, hi, everyone. Hey, look, Anthony, he's grown. Last time he was on, he was about that high. Just a little bit. And where's Noah? No Noah's way. here, too. Come here, come on. <laughs> but there you got the whole, the whole caboose here now. Uh, there's Noah, Anthony, and there's Bob. Yes. We're going for a walk around the corner to yeah. see at the moment. All right. Okay. Uh, they've been fed, so. Okay. Yes. Done. See you when you come back. You stay here with me, Bob. Yes? Yes. Can you just pull that door too, please, Dale? Shank you. No, your bed's up in the other shed. Yes, and no, I haven't fed you, have I? You're going to say hello to everyone? Oh, come on, where are you? Come on, don't get all camera shy a minute. He does, doesn't he? He's all camera shy. You want to get fed? Food? You tell him. That's it. Oh, no, they've got a fair. Um, just up the road at one of the schools. So they're obviously going up there for that, but it doesn't matter. I'll still do this and then where's he going to sit down? Um, uh, I use tape to clamp thing boards low. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Then we uh, some boys. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, Ken. Nothing wrong. G'day, Jared. How are you? Yeah, Nigel, I'll be back with you in a tick. I'll just shoot this, mate. Ooh, didn't like that very much, did it? Oops. More water, I think. That's what happens when your wife comes in and talks to you. Do da boom. Here we go. And it's not moving. Okay, now we'll put the dip in there. About here, I reckon. And one nice. 
punainen, punainen. No. Kyllä lampa gank. Ei vielä. Hellä. That will get me out of trouble. Um, thin boards. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get a. Oh, do 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 do. Got to have a bit here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Oh. Okay, see, the, the advantage of live stream. What I would do, these are six mil. Um, if you can, I would do what I just did there and put a little sprung joint in there and then put them, hey, um, which one are we looking? Oh, I think we'll come back this way, there you go. And then put them on a board like this. And you could tape them as, as Anthony suggested. Or what I would do, put them on a board <coughs> that's thinner than what you've got. So you've just got a little bit of overhang either side. Get some clamps. I'll put a clamp there and a clamp on the other side. Okay, like that. And then if this backing board is narrower than what you've got there, then you just put your clamp either side on here, but it's going to be supported by that backing board. So does that help? Does that help? Oh, Tony Payne, g'day mate, how are you? <coughs> um, oh, what's the water for? Oh, that's to stop the um, timber from slipping in the vice, Tony. <coughs> oh, let's see. Uh, okay, good. Please that help, Nodge. Oh, all right, well, we'll just glue this one up. And then I'll go and feed my dog. He's better than the alarm clock, that dog. If I hadn't fed him by six o'clock, he lets me know. All oh, the other day I had to take um, the big fella up to Scouts. And I was in a bit of a rush which isn't unusual for me. And I fed Bob. And then when I came home, he's carrying on like a pork chop. And I thought, what's wrong with you? I'm sure I fed you. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. So I'll give him another feed. And then I go in and say, Susie, should, did you feed Bob before you went out? I said, no. Oh, yes, I did. And she said, yeah, he came in to me as if he hadn't been fed for a month. So she fed him. And then at nine o'clock at night when I came back, <laughs> I fed him again. He slept well. Didn't you? No, you're not going out. You stay here. Because I know what you're going to do. You're going to slip the fence and you're going to follow him. Oh, I'm not silly. I wasn't born last week. Oh. <whistles> okay. So I said this um, tight bond original, it's nice. <laughs> it's, yeah, I think it's 30 years worth of glue under this bench. It must be close to 10 years under this bench. I'm gonna pull that out. Join these together. And then we're ready to rock and roll. Um, oh look, you could do that, James, yeah. Uh, that's not a bad idea, as James suggested. I'd buy this commercially, oh, just from a 
catering outlet. It's a, a baking powder. A baking powder. Oh dear, it's late. Baking paper. Um, and it stops it from doing that. Causing a little bit of frustration down the road when it glues to the backing board. Uh, GG just had to swing and say hi, your video looks like you're filming by Pro Studio. I saw a video that was years old. Very informative, great work, and thanks for me. Hey, thanks, GG, I appreciate that. There's a long story how I... No, you're not going out, Bob, so you might as well sit down. Um, how this workshop basically turned into a studio. Um, I was having problems with the TV station that originally was filming woodworking masterclass with their equipment. So I ended up buying all the equipment um, for myself. No, no idea. And it's worked out really, really well. I did have uh, more cameras down here, but I've just taken three or four of them up to, no, you're not going down that door either, to the um, wood turning workshop because I want to stream from there as well. Ah. And seeing I hadn't streamed for so long, I thought it would be nice to say hi and come down here and do some. I might even be brave enough and turn something live. Theo's not allowed to watch. For those of you that don't know Theo, he's a mate of mine and a master wood turner. And although I'm not embarrassed about what I do, I definitely got a long way to go to get up to his standard. But it's all fun. And the lathe I've got is a record Harold, Harold Coronet. No, Coronet Harold, sorry. A record Coronet Herald. And it is, oh, it's lovely. The, the other one I've got down here in this shed, which I use for furniture work, it's huge. It's a big clunker. But one person cannot move it. It's a massive thing. But it's got 1,800 between centres. Um, so when I'm doing legs or spindles or something like that, or you could almost do a newel post on it if you wanted to. It's really good. But, oh, this, this new one is brilliant. Electronic variable speed, reverse. It's nice and quiet. Well, this other thing I've got, just a belt drive uh, with a gearbox. And it's noisy and clunky. Anyway. But I've had it for a long time and it has served me well and done a lot of work with it. I'm just wondering while I'm doing those, should I do the other ones? Um, now what is a good idea if I've got some rag? Let me just go next door to the machine shop. I'll grab some rag if I can. Oh, where's some rag? Raggedy, raggedy, rag. Oh, that's not exactly what oh, that might do. It's dirty, but it does save a lot of time. And another very cheap workshop accessory you can get for under a dollar. Oh, this one was a bit more than a dollar, but just a, oh, yuck, has got dead things in it. But anyway, um, just a bucket with water and then when you've had a glue up like this, if you just wash all that excess glue off before it sets, it can save you so much time. Um, when you come to doing the machining. Oh, and all the, if you're gonna use a sander, it saves the sandpaper because it doesn't get gummed up with glue. So we'll just clean the rest of this off. Ah, dear. Love this coach where the grain is just spectacular on it. 
I think when I turned professional, um, the first thing I ever made was with Coach was a cabinet that we had for years. Totally made wrong, but it didn't matter, it worked. Actually, I will. I'll just put that camera on it so you can see how gorgeous it is. The grain just, oh, it's just lovely. And they call it coach wood in Australia because, like you had Wells Fargo in America, in Australia we had a company called Cobb & Co. And they used to use this a lot in building the coaches because of its resilience, its workability, and resilience. And they used to use it in the running gear of the um, axles and springs and what have you. So that's why I got called Coachwood. It's interesting, isn't it, how some of these names came about. Uh, what have we got here? What was we working on? Sorry. <laughs> We're working on a blending island for the kitchen. So all the things that my wife uses to masticate food for our consumption can go on here instead of taking up kitchen bench space or cupboard space. And I've got a part of the ben a bench in the kitchen that is just empty space. And so this is gonna slide nicely into that little alcove and be out of the way until we want to use it. There we go. That's that one. And I'm thinking that the other one is most likely going too hard for me to do that with. I don't know. Actually, the other one's not too bad. No, I think I'll leave that one. So there you go. All Dunsky. Oh. Whoops. But the, the main... The main reason of the stream more than anything else, and I will actually pull that part of the stream out and put it up as a separate video, is why I don't, I, look, I enjoy the look of Bookmatched, but from a technical point of view, it's not the best decision that you can make in solid timber for the reasons that I outlined earlier. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for that. There you go. Um, do you use salt to keep from having movement when gluing boards low? No, I've never heard of that one, Gigi. I was very tempted by those Ryobi lays they're selling in Bunnings this month. 192 is cheap to be good, surely. But tempting. Look, the thing is, Gigi, for what? What is that? 139 bucks, if you don't like it and it breaks, take it back, get your money back. Use it for a week, take it back. If you don't like it, they give you your money back. And you have the opportunity of doing some wood turning. I think more important than the lathe is the turning tools that you have. That's the most important thing. I'm going to start getting into um, blacksmithing a few myself. I've looked at, looked at I've, I've bought a few, I've got a fair few. Not as many as Theo, yeah, I think he work, runs into the hundreds. I maybe have 10, 20, 30, 40 or 50. Uh, but I would like the experience of making some purpose-made tools, uh, bowl scrapers and what are they called? Hook scrapers. So I'm going to have a go at that, which I will most likely do a video of. Um, as some of you may have seen, I did a tongue tool rest for the lathe the other day. That's... Uh, last video I put up, I think. So look, give it a go, give it a go. I'm starting to now give classes um, if you're in the Brisbane area or Brisbane, Gold Coast, whatever. 
And the thing is, if you want to work with a lathe or you want to do blacksmithing or you want to do marquetry, wood carving, carpentry, um, resin work, whatever, you get into half a day with me and I actually come to your place and bring all the machines. So if you want to learn how to use the lathe, as an example, I load the lathe up, you tell me if you want to make bowls and spindles, I bring all the stuff out you need, we get half a day and then I pack up and leave and you end up with a heap of bowls or a heap of spindles. So there you go. That's what my new venture for next year is. But no, give it a try. 139 bucks, you can't go wrong. My very first lathe was two bits of angle iron with a one-third horsepower, unshielded washing machine motor. And it turned. All it's got to do is turn the wood. That's it. There you go. Um, I love that you craft and what you do. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Appreciate that. Uh, you must definitely leave country to enough kitchen space like that. Oh, look, I don't know. Um, it, it's a very well-built house. I did have a very large house on the Gold Coast, and I mean large. This one's definitely not as large as that, but the rooms seem to work a lot better. And yeah, anyway, that's what, when it gets put in, I'll actually do a video of putting it in and that's it. Um, well, I can give you an idea of the master bedroom. I've got the super king size mattress on the floor that I'm making the four poster bed for. And we still sleep in a queen size bed and we've got a desk and three bookcases and a TV and a couple of other things in there. I think the master bedroom's five metres by seven metres. There you go. So they, they, they're nice rooms. Uh, Victoria, oh mate, that's a pity. But there's a woodshed community a few minutes away, 60 bucks a month, use their machines, bring out electric tools. Like, yeah, I don't know, it depends how you feel about crowds. I don't particularly like crowds. Um, 60 bucks a month, that's half the price of your lathe and you can take it back and get your money back if you don't like it. I don't know if you can get 30 bucks back if you only go to two weeks to the shed. Anyway, you work it out. Oh dear, oh dear. Um, you're in Melbourne too. Oh, James. Well, there you go. So now who asked me to go down to Melbourne? Somebody did. I can't remember what it was. I don't know. It might happen next year. I don't know. I do not know. Um, well, that's it. That's it, honestly. That was just a, a quick one I wanted to... Uh, let you know what I thought about book match and the reasons to look for alternatives. There is another um, one called slip match, which depending on the um, the, 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 the I'm, try, I'm trying to find one here. Depending on the figure in the timber, many times you can get away with a slip match, which is just as good if it's a straight grain. If it's not a straight grain, oh, this is stupid. I've got all these things. Oh, E, 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 F. That's an E. Okay, these two here. They're going to fall down, go crash, boom. Okay, so we'll get back to. What we were talking about with book match. Okay. So book match is when we do this. I'll get that off there for a minute. Book match is when we do this. And as I explained before, what happens as soon as you do that, I might drop the other camera. There you go, that's a bit better. Okay, book match is when we do that. Now what happens, the grain changes direction. So when you machine it, if it's glued together, it looks nice because you've got these patterns lining up nicely, but then you're gonna get tear out in one piece. But if you do slip match, which is you cut it like this, but you just pull it off, you see, you can get 
almost the same effect. It depends on the grain pattern, but that way the grain is running in the same direction. Now that's called slip match as opposed to book match. Yeah, well that's something that might be worth thinking of. I hope it was of interest. Uh, when are you coming back? I'll be here. I don't know, Ken. Um, I, I don't know. I might mosey on tomorrow. I like to do Mondays, but I haven't been doing them for a few weeks because I've had a lot of other things. Um, those two lads that were here before, they're our grandsons and we're bringing them up. So they do take a lot of our time running around and one of them's homeschooled, so we've got to do stuff with him. But look, yeah, I send out notices. So if you like, hit the subscribe button and uh, the, the bell and that'll let you know when I'm coming back on. So I hope to be doing one again very, very soon, which will be good. Greetings from Romania. Thank you for the best woodworking chat. Thank you, Esteban. Is it Esteban? Thank you. Appreciate the comment. So that's it for the moment anyway. This is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember, keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other. And I look forward to having your company in one of the workshops at one of the workbenches very, very soon. Till then, God bless. Good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. Goodbye. Catch you later. Bye for now.